Hey, do I have you guys? Because I think I just ended the stream and then started it again. I'm really sorry about that. <laughs> I'm having some technical difficulties. It says the chat's disabled for me. Is that what it says for you guys? I can't see the chat. Let me straighten that. It's really hard to get that straight. Um, let's see here. Let me, um, I'm gonna exit this. Hi, Sam again. Nice to see you. I see you on Twitch there. All right. I, for some reason, my uh, thumbnail was the incorrect thumbnail. And so I didn't want that to be the video that was uploaded. So, um, sorry, I had to restart it because that's too confusing. So, all right, now I see it. Hello. Did you guys have a good weekend? So if you've been waiting, um, it went live and then I and then I ended it. So you're gonna have to refresh. Hopefully, um, hopefully that works for you guys. Sorry about that. Welcome, welcome. I'm pretty excited that we're going back to these dream jammies of mine. Um, so <laughs> having that little break though, drafting the bodice was awesome. I love that. I love that all of you really liked doing the pattern drafting as well. So, all right, let me see if I can find you guys because I think I totally, <laughs> I think I totally lost you guys. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, there's that. See, I'm getting this weird, I need to print my screen here. Oh, where is it? Where is it? There it is. All right. All right, let me see if I can find you guys. I just typed in the YouTube chat. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm hoping you guys find me. Yeah, Beverly, you might have to exit out and start again because I had to. I had to actually click, refreshing didn't work. So if you guys, if I'm frozen on your screen or something, I don't know if you can even see me. Um, you're gonna have to like exit out and then start it again, sorry about that. Totally my fault. I don't know why my thumbnail was the incorrect thumbnail. Look at my table's a total mess. I promise we'll get there. <laughs> Hi Cheyenne, hi Beverly. How's it going you guys? So I'm watching Twitch in two different windows and someone from Mob Crush was gonna help me try and figure out my unified chat, but now I'm feeling like I just am adding too much to the front of this video. Perfect, Beverly, awesome. Um, to uh, include that in today. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna get to it. Hopefully folks will find us. They're probably like, why isn't she going live? And they don't know it's frozen. I do the same thing, Beverly. I watch on one device, but then I type on another because it's easier. Is that why you do that? <laughs> so this week we're also deciding um, what things we're going to be doing for our gift stream week, things to sew. Um, and I did bring in my potluck dish carrier that it was a trial out of oil cloth. And so it has these handles and um, you just put your dish in there and then you can carry it. Oil cloth is not a good idea, it's super cute, but um, it, it's not good for hot dishes. So that's why mine's a sample. Oops. I also made a cherry pie right before I started. This is the this is the pan that it's in, you know, like a Marie Callender's pan. So, hi PJ, how's it going? You know, getting prepped for Thanksgiving, cherry pie. <laughs> Pumpkin's too easy. <laughs> Oh wait, I need my mouse so I can watch ch Twitch chat as well. All right, so um, a few weeks ago, I had some fabric printed on Spoonflower fabric, and I really wanted a set of jammies that had the that were matchy matchy, but I wanted the bottoms to be woven and the tops to be um, knit. And so I printed the same print on both. So we made the woven jammy bottoms. I think two weeks ago, these are the Caroline pajama bottoms. I know the print's super busy on the camera. It's got a fully encased elastic waist. I French seamed it because it's just nice. And then the pockets, I actually stitched down 
the pockets. I don't know if you can even see. Here's my stitch line right here. I stitch down the pockets so that I don't have to worry about any ironing because you know sometimes your pockets get all wonky in the wash. Um, and I did do the little bit of trim on the cuff, which is this fabric right here. And then this is knit. So it printed almost identical. For the most part, it looks identical. I think to me, I can probably tell because it's in person. But um, it printed so nice. I find that when you're going for really good quality printing, it's nice to have a really pale background or no background at all on smooth flower prints. The darks print really, really well, but in the wash, they will get a little, they get that like white haze on them. So, um, you know what I mean? Kind of like, I think you know what I mean, you know? So the darks, they look, they print great. Don't get me wrong, but they do kind of, they get a little faded and they get a little bit of a white haze. So. Anywho, so we are making, these are the Caroline pajamas. And I'm also going to be cutting some kids clothes today as a sponsored stream from Hearts Fabric. And we're doing the Poppy and Jazz Willow Pinafore and the Elm t-shirt. And we're doing this little guy, I think in like six months size, really small. And then the Willow, what's the Willow? I can't remember, maybe size six. The pattern's all traced and ready to go. So those are those are gonna be after we cut out the pajama tops. I'm cutting two at the same time, but I'm probably only gonna sew one on camera. So, so this is I've made these Caroline pajamas a couple times, and this is more the the more traditional style with the piping, and the edging. Um, I think my only modifications to this are the fact that I didn't put piping inside my edging. I just left it flat, and then. I shortened it a tiny bit. I kind of wish I hadn't shortened it, I have to be honest. Hi, Vicki, you found us. I kind of, <laughs> there were like six people waiting to, for me to go live and then I stopped the stream and went live again. So I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry you guys. <laughs> um, this one I did a mix of French seams and then I searched the armholes. But I also stitched down the facing to kind of help with wrinkles in the wash. This is how it looks when it comes out of the laundry. So it's honestly not ideal. I feel like it fits better when it's been ironed. So this time I'm making a knit version and I am going to make it, we already modified the pattern. So this is in a past live stream where I took the pattern and I modified it into more of like a, looks like more like a baseball jersey they're like a more traditional kind with the, um, the facing is gonna be seamed on there with some piping edging sticking out of it. No edging on the sleeve cuffs because remember I'm doing this in knit so I don't really wanna add too much of the woven trim in there just cause you know, I don't want it to over time act weird in the laundry. So, so we're ready to go. I have a little bit left of the edging from when we sewed the pants and I just need a tiny bit more. I did a little quick measure and I'll just cut a little bit more. So, and it is pre-washed so that hopefully it won't act weird, but you know, it can when you're mixing the wovens and knits together, especially as a, in a seam like that. But I think having the facing like that is going to be, it's going to be a good way to kind of reinforce the, woven trim and make it more stable. I'm also gonna top stitch it down, so. All right, so what are you guys up to? Are you guys sewing? How are you, how are you? Let me move this over. So I accidentally had only printed one yard of this fabric the first time because I'm a total twit. I printed it as if I was making a short sleeve t-shirt out of it. And then I went, when I, I didn't even realize it until right before we were supposed to stream the jammy top, I was like, oh. Wow, I don't know how I did that. <laughs> so you guys had to wait for me to get more fabric and get it washed. All right, so we have our facing there. So I'm gonna cut it in two sections. I have my other fabric choice right underneath here. I have the jammy bottoms cut in that as well. You eating lunch? Nice. I, I feel like I'm starting to have a very like my tradition after my stream is always to eat lunch because I'm pretty hungry right afterward. And my tradition lately has been like a homemade sandwich. And I, it tastes so good when, when I'm done streaming. 
especially if I put like salty chips inside of it. All right, so let's make sure these are on grain. Let's see, I have nine inches. So how are you guys doing on your blocks? Are you working on them? I haven't started mine yet. I mean, obviously I did the one for the dress form, but I um, haven't done my own yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this right about here. Eight and three eighths and eight and three eighths. Ah, thank you, Dominic. <laughs> Thanks for following. I'm streaming live on Twitch and YouTube, just so you know, because it looks like sometimes I'm talking to people that you can't see in the chat. I have a feeling like I kind of, I kind of didn't do so good this morning getting getting going on the stream with the uh, the chat. Oh wait, this is my, this is my cut line, right? What did I do here? I know I added to the wrist circumference and then I cut it out, but I didn't cut the cap. That's what it looks like. All right, I could have been a little more explicit with myself. Here's my facing. I feel like I'm gonna need four of these. And let's let's move this up straight up. So the only difference on this sleeve that I did um, was increase my cuff circumference, it looks like. Right guys, that's what I did, right? Because I can see my line right there and how I drew it in. I can't remember now. <laughs> so bad, huh? I'm gonna need two of these as well, but I think I can just do it open out like that and then I'll get two. And I think I can get my facing here. I'll need four of these because I'm going to fully line the facing. And, and then I also probably wouldn't use um, interfacing because of the knit being kind of thick. Let's look here. Are we on all four layers? Okay. I like these for these narrow pieces. I don't know what that says. But if you can speak English in the chat, that would be preferred just so everyone can see what you're saying. All right. We're gonna start cutting. Cause we have three garments to cut today. Bit to sew. I'm doing a lot these weeks, filling the week since we're gonna take a week break next week. I mean, I'm taking a break from streaming, but I'm still gonna work. <laughs> I need to get my um, other patterns off to the graphic artist and I am gonna take next week to get caught up on that before she asks me. So I'm not behind at all. You know what I mean? Oh, I got that a little crooked. Oh man, went into my pattern a little bit. All right. I'm going to notch my center here. I think I'm going to use a combination of techniques for sewing these together um, with the, ooh, that was too deep, um, with the uh, serger and using the machine as a, my stretch stitch. All right, so here we are, our, our my, thankfully, my fabrics are not one way, so I can flip this. It's very close. Think I can do it? Think I can do it. Whew. All right. I don't want to be low on fabric again. I can't believe I did that the first time. I was like, what? You know, your sleeve can take a yard of fabric, you know? The sleeve takes a lot more than you realize. What if I did this? Yes. Why didn't I think of that at first? 
just kind of making sure I get this parallel here since I know I got this piece on green. That'll help just like that. I know my uh, cutting shakes the camera a little bit. Sorry about that, you guys. I'll try and cut a nice smooth line so you don't get that. I haven't even tried on my jammy bottoms. I've made them twice before though, so I'm not too worried about it. But I am looking forward to like trying on the entire set. It's gonna be so yummy. I'm excited. Nice, Beverly. I don't know what Mexican muslin is. What does that mean? <laughs> notching my centers here you know honestly um, I don't need that notch as much as you would if you were doing a collar especially if you're setting a collar on even on the notch collar you don't really need it as much but it is helpful to remember along the way what the overlap is so that when I go to the buttons and buttonholes I'm I'm pretty clear on where what I need all right where's that binder clip I'm gonna I'm just gonna clip my patterns together. All right, so let's move this closer. Oh, you mean you bought it in Puerto Rico? How was your trip? That's kind of a fun souvenir. You bought such a practical souvenir. I really like that. All right, so this is my back. Oh, I thought I just clipped my, I did. Well, how did I just do that? I just clipped my, did you guys see that? I just caught my blade on something. I've been kind of wanting to change the blade in this, but I tested it and it worked really good. So I was like, all right, let's just wait, you know? But um, now I can't, I can't not do it. Usually I have like a container for the old ones. Oh, there it is. Oh, you're still there. Nice. Oh, wait, I want, um, I don't want these. I want the old. So is that like the snowbird thing? I've heard of snowbirds. People who escape the cold go to warmer locales. What's the opposite? Because I know like in places like Bend, Oregon, there's people that go there for the skiing, right? I am kind of out of sorts, aren't I? I should have taken my blade off first. All right, this is gonna be so nice. Yeah, it's a snowbird thing, nice. That's awesome, how fun. Do you always go to Puerto Vallarta or do you pick somewhere new every year, Beverly? Well, that's pretty cool. See, and here, it would be the opposite. We would go to somewhere to escape, escape the heat. And I do see people do that. I think my neighbors did that this year. I don't know them, but they have this, um, they had this yellow lab that always, it was a big yellow lab dog, you know, that would sit in the front yard, even when they were in the house. And it would just sit out there on the edge of the grass by the driveway, looking so stoic. And um, I was always like, God, there's no way that not either of my dogs would do that. Maybe a former dog I've had maybe would have done that. But um, I'm just going to save that just in case. But he was always there. And then sometimes they leave their, their garage door open and cracked so he could go back in if he wanted. And then one day 
he must have passed away because they had like a chair on the lawn with flowers and his portrait there. And I was like, oh, I didn't even know these people. And I was so sad. Um, but their, their house is so like, everyone passes it when they enter the neighborhood. So you kind of know their, you know, you know their routine. And I noticed that they were gone this summer. And I thought, oh, I would they escaped the heat or went on a great trip. Or maybe they'd been saving it, you know, because they didn't ever want to leave their dog, you know. So... Always, oh, that's awesome, Beverly. <laughs> I've done that with, um, I've, I've had lots of friends do that in San Miguel day and day. I'm sure you've heard of that. All right, so as I recall, this sleeve is symmetrical, right? Oh, no, it's not. All right. Right, because this was designed for knit, uh, wovens. So I probably could have drafted this so that I didn't need the, um, it, can be, it could have been symmetrical for knits. But I am cutting a knit, a, a woven pattern in knit. Let's protect my blade. All right, I'm gonna put the sleeve away. I'm gonna start separating out my fabrics so that I have two piles. I know this moth print is really busy for you guys, but I love it so much. Oh, that's awesome, Barbara, that's a good idea. You can pin it if you want. You don't have to sew it. I was thinking that would encourage people to sew it because it's faster, you know? Okay, so I just need my I just need my pockets now and my back neck facing out of these last few pieces and then we'll cut the front and back on the others that are already stacked. I'm gonna do the pocket with a seam in it so that um, I have an opportunity to use the trim again, you know. But you know, I was just looking at this pocket. This one looks a little, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of how this is proportioned. You can see, like, I most likely, well, I think I did, I don't know, is this binding that I had already cut? I don't think so. Um, I may have not pre-washed it for when I used it. I'm not sure, but you can see it's pulling in. Can you see that? Why is my camera drifting? It's not. It's like a fish eye almost, right? You can see it's pulling in right there. Can you tell? Um, but I'm not a big fan of how tall this is right here. So I think I'll shorten that. I think the proportions would look better with the, for the seam right there. What is that? So this is the um, cuff. And this is the bottom. So I think I'll add a half inch to the top of this. And then cut that down. Right, this is my this is my grain line right here. I'm gonna try and cut these on the smaller pieces so that I can save my scraps just in case. Well, okay, that's not gonna be usable, but this this might. I only need one pocket. All right. I think mainly this pocket will be just for looks. So we're gonna make that one a half inch taller and then we're gonna make this a half inch smaller. And this is kind of, this is basically a piece that's folded in half when it's sewn. So it goes like this. Hey Megan, did you find us okay? Because I, I kind of, <laughs> I kind of did some, dumb things with the stream when I started. Yeah, I am going to um, put a little trim on it. I totally agree, Beverly. I even thought about putting it around the perimeter, you know? It totally will disappear, but you know. I know the map is cool. Let's see, can I get this in here though? 
I may have to turn, maybe I'll turn them both off on a different grain. I can probably fit this on the other piece of fabric, but you know, I just try and get as much as possible. Right? It was so easy, all right. Yeah, I, uh, I realized my thumbnail was wrong. Maybe that was my fault. Maybe I forgot to update it. And so it showed the pattern drafting one. And so I went off live and then I went on again. And I could tell people were sitting there waiting and I was like, oh shoot. All right, so I'm just gonna cut it out the normal size. And now I'm gonna cut off the half inch, which means I have to cut off an inch because it's folded. So then it'll be more like this. That, <laughs> is that what I want my pocket to look like? That's a little more obvious, isn't it, Beverly? With this huge moth wing. I should have probably thought about that, huh? Okay, so we have our top pocket. I'm gonna cut this one on grain. Uh, I'm gonna put it, uh, Oh, look at that. Maybe I could match. Can I match this? Let's see. Probably not, huh? Dang. Where is this at? This is like this. Jackie, how's it going? Nan, your your the um, color for your name is such a pale yellow on my screen. I can barely I can barely see it at first. I noticed that the um, colors of the chat kind of change into a, kind of like a rainbow. Like your names all don't stay the same color over time. Oh hi, Louise. See, I didn't even see Louise. She's just, she's the same color as Beverly right now. <laughs> I know, Megan, it was my fault though. All right, okay, let's see. I've been changing grain lines too much, so if this is like this, that means this would be like this. Could I? I don't think I can. I don't think I can. So maybe I will focus on that not being a part of it and do this up here. That way, um, I'm clearly not trying to match it. I'm making my pocket this one I'm making a half inch taller, right? Yeah. I'm just changing the proportions of where that seam in the middle of the pocket is. I'm so glad you're here too. Yeah, so today's our cutting stream. This is kind of a normal schedule this week. Last year we did yeah, I could, Megan. I'm kind of cutting it close on fabric. So I was thinking that, um, that's kind of, what do you think of that? And then my, my little bit of trim will be here. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, I like this, but I'm not, I kind of like this big difference here. I might look at, what my options are with the rest of the fabric because I'm about to lay that on the table. Yeah, so usually we cut on a Wednesday, so Thursday, Saturday, and we are sewing three things this week, which is not, not very typical. It's not, <laughs> it's not out of the normal for me to take on more than I probably should, but, um, <laughs> I totally made an error when I ordered my fabric. Oh, let's cut the facing here. Oh, and I need, I do need two. This isn't the most accurate when you start cutting things this thick, you know. I'm going to true it up afterward. Huzzah for a new blade, except... That was just a little too thick. It's this line right here, right? Let's just do this. Um, 
two layers. One, two. I'm cutting out two jammy tops. So yeah, I made a little bit of an error on my, well, I made a big error on my um, fabric purchase thinking I, I, when I ordered it, I they were having a great sale on the Spoonflower knits and they were 25% off, which you just never see. And so I was like, you know, I'm gonna just buy a couple of one yard pieces and get myself some short, sleeve t-shirts out of some fun knits and then I ordered this one even though I knew it was for my jammies as if it was a short sleeve t-shirt all right so I am going to mark the middle of this that'll be a helpful sewing guide I'm going to do it very shallow because I used a quarter inch seam allowance when I drafted it and now let's cut this one and so um, in the interim while I was waiting for my fabric that's when we drafted our blocks last week which was really fun Pretty excited about that. I'm excited to see how you guys do. It is still gonna be a button up PJ top, but I took the collar off, Louise. <laughs> Come on, Megan, you love it. <laughs> so we still need to talk about our um, gift sewing thing. I want to make it so that you guys can do some of the projects if you want. But I know like leading up to that, we're all going to be really busy. Some of us with Thanksgiving stuff and some of us um, just because this time of year gets kind of kooky, you know? So I'm thinking right now that we're going to do, um, we're gonna do that one yard bias cut apron by Decades of Style. And she was so sweet, she actually gifted me a copy of the pattern my, of my very own. Oh no, Megan, that's a bummer. And then, um, well, you know, it'll, it'll be nice when you have that dress done and it'll, you'll have it ready to go, you know? It'll be like something in your, in your closet waiting. Oh, you bought green velvet for it? Ooh. I just moved the fabric so that the fold is towards me because one of my pattern pieces is on the fold. So I kind of want to make sure my folds are stacked right on top of each other. Even though these fabrics are identical, they can still wash a little differently. The printing can be a little differently, especially because the other one it has a background ink you know, like a background color. So it's been printed on completely, whereas the moths, only the moths were the ink. So little things like that can really change your fabric. So I'm just smoothing it out right now. So we're thinking about doing the one yard bias apron by Decades of Style. And then we're also going to do a pot holder that actually works for your fingertips. And what was the other thing? I was thinking about the stow bag by Grainline Studio because maybe bags for like quick grocery bag type things would be great for people. What do you guys think of that? And then um, I'd really like to do one day where I sew some cupcakes and pie slices for any people that want like hands-on help with those. I know that's kind of self-promoting, but I need to do that anyway because I don't really want to, um, you know, not sew that for folks that want it. Yeah, it's pretty obvious to me too, Barbara. But this is this is really wide. This is where, like, when you start learning, um, when you start learning about repeats, this is exactly what they look for. You don't want that to happen. It's almost hard to, it's almost impossible to avoid in some cases. This is a pretty big print, but you can tell exactly where the repeat is, right? And that's what you're trying to avoid. So ideally what you do is, I mean, like this is great. Like they have like little wings going, like coming across that little spot. But, you know, um, ideally you would have like a half a moth on your, repeat line and the other half coming over there, you know, and then that way it looks a little more seamless. 
it's tricky business. This is actually a really great repeat. I think they did a fantastic job. Um, and, you know, we're looking at it also in a weird way, sideways. Let's look at it right side up and see how obvious it is. I love thinking about repeats. So this is the length grain of the fabric. It's pretty interesting. Really, Louise? That's awesome. Hi, Rachel. How's it going? Yeah, so like when my my pants were hanging up there in the studio since I sewed them, um, they've just been sitting there since I took that bad picture. <laughs> and um, that since the legs, you know, are this wide, it's not as obvious, but they do kind of look like crazy pants, you know. <laughs> Good thing they're jammies. <laughs> All right, so I just have two pattern pieces left. I have my um, back and my front. I'll, I'll cant it towards one end so then I have this nice strip and maybe I could uh, fussy cut the pocket a little more. All right, so the back's on the fold. And like Again, like you really wanna make sure anytime you're cutting two layers on the fold, that you got your folds stacked straight up on, on top, one on top of the other because if you have it so that um, you can see them both, sometimes then that means one's gonna be a little bit bigger and like in the case of this, that's not gonna be a big deal when I go to sew it because it's knit. So knit's really forgiving and it'll hide a lot of your sewing and cutting errors, which is great, and fitting errors or fitting issues. But if you had done this in woven and you had to sew a collar to it, or you know, if this was just this as is cut and woven, you might have a few issues with your um the piece you're sewing to it fitting because one of these is bigger. So you just wanna make sure your folds are pretty accurate. Okay. You could put a back pleat right here if you wanted. I don't really need one since it's knit. I don't wanna stretch it to match, but it's like matching great there and then a little bit shy right there. All right, so let's get our So Jackie, are you um, a new sewist? Oh, hi, brown sugar. It is raining out there so bad. <laughs> what do you like to sew? Everyone sews a variety of things here. So I use the um, closet case patterns to draft my modifications. All I did was remove the collar and just made it um, a button front. I left the great detail with the the um, piping, the edging. It's not technically piping. I'm kind of cheating with that because I'm not going to fill it with piping. All right, I'm going to do this center right here. I put my notch right there, a quarter inch away from the center, but that's not necessary. I'm not going to be confused that that's the back. So. Oh, right, exactly. You just meant for pattern pa placement balance, exactly. Yeah, it'll be good for PJs, I think. And you know, what'll happen is the first few times I'll wear them always together, you know, like the moth's <laughs> top with the moth bottoms. And then eventually I'll probably wear the moth top with some black bottoms and a t-shirt with, the, with the, the moth bottoms, you know what I mean? I'll start off pretty good, but then I'll, I'll switch. Okay, so let's cut this front out. Plenty of room to put my pocket pieces right here as well. So maybe what I'll do, like if you're if you're wanting great great fabric usage, sometimes you may want to keep this connected. It's the most and biggest piece, but that would be kind of weird to put in. You know, like fold this up. So what? Me a rebel? Are you calling me a rebel? Because of the way I'm going to wear my jammies. <laughs> Nobody cares. The only people I see in my jammies, mostly animals <laughs> and my family. All 
right. I'm not going to keep this in one piece, so I'm going to cut this off so I can move it off to the side. Now that's my cut line, right? You know, old me, you know, in the past probably could have given me in the future a little bit more direction. Where's those gifts to our future selves I'm always talking about? All right, so we'll use our that for the pocket. So my facing is going to be sewn onto the garment in a seam. So it's going to be kind of more like a button extension rather than a facing. You know what I mean? <laughs> My, my family's tradition is you get to, because we do celebrate Christmas. We're not religious. We don't do it from that standpoint. But, um, <laughs> right, Carrie? Uh, or Karen? Um, and, um, but we, our tradition is you open one gift on Christmas Eve. It's always wrapped in white tissue, so you know which one it is. And it's always jammies. And my mom's rationale for that was so that we would all look good in the photos that were being taken on Christmas Day when we were kids and not wearing ratty old jammies or mismatched jammies, you know what I mean? And we still have that tradition, but now we're all a little more like, I want the jammies to be pre-washed, so sometimes we'll open it earlier in the day so that we can wash our jammies, so. <laughs> right, Beverly? I know, last night I put mine on at like 5.15. I was tired yesterday. I want. I did so many errands, and then I had to get to my office and work. And then I ended up, and we. I went on a walk in the morning, five miles, and I was just so tired. And I was just mentally tired because I'm starting to get to that stage in the patterns where I'm having to commit to certain things that I'm just like, oh, I hope this is gonna be okay, you know. And I was just a little mentally exhausted. Yeah, Louise. I think that's it. I know because um, my kid was at first like, wait, I don't get to pick the gift. I'm like, no, this is the gift. And then she was like, oh, it's pajamas, you know. But then over time, like as she got older, she was like, all right, where's the jammies I got to open, you know. And then I think it became like a more affectionate thing. <laughs> well, I could, Megan, but what if I need to return them, you know. Like what if they don't like them or they're the wrong size, you know. So um, I was just going to mark my pocket. That's what I'm doing here. And I I was going to use my screw punch and make a hole, but um, I don't know why I was just about to do that. But I will put a hole in my, I'm gonna put a hole in my pattern pieces first. My screw punch will go through fabric. It's not designed for that though. But um, I do cheat and do it, but I've had to buy a new tip because of that. <clears throat> I'm going to do it like this. I could do the hole because the hole, it does fall inside of the pocket. Like it wouldn't be on the outside. There wouldn't be any risk, but just not really a need to put a hole in it. And it looks kind of commercially sewn when I do that. So, cause that's what you do. I'm trying to make my things look nicer than commercially sewn, right? But putting a hole in it is fast. All right. So we have our pocket markings. Now I could match, well maybe, I could match my, um, oh I only need one pocket on one side. It's always this side, huh? <laughs> nice. Aww. That's awesome, Beverly. Your 28-year-old. He wanted Star Wars jammies. <laughs> no, he wanted Legos. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I've been, you know, I'm always watching Big Bang Theory after work. It's like my go-to thing to watch. Well, I just realized I haven't checked on Twitch to see if anyone's chatting. Sorry about that, you guys. <laughs> and, um, okay, perfect. Um, 
And those, they've been like, they've cycled through the all like 12 season, seasons so that one of the, it's like they've played two half hours of it. So one strand, the like the second half hour, I think is like season one and then the first half hour is like season 11 or 12. It's kind of funny because if you, so if you watch them back to back, they're not in the correct order, but that's just how it always has been. And it's really funny seeing the first season of them because you know like i just remember back then just just laughing so hard that they would come out in their like star wars jammies or whatever you know it was pretty funny and i think that was just kind of the funny thing now we know people do that all the time right so <laughs> it's like grown men wearing their underoos and things like that <laughs> i think that shows really funny so okay that's scrap fabric and this is scrap fabric right so we want to work on my pocket. Dang, it's a lot of pattern pieces. Okay, there's that moth again. But I could do a um, match of it this time. Ooh, there's a big old slice through it. That's just lovely. I only need to recut this one. This is my bottom half, right? Uh, this one is like this, right? Right. <laughs> you just got on the bottoms. That's, he'll love those. Didn't I cut this off grain? Yeah. Right? Yeah, like that. That's what I did. So I gotta remember to leave room for this fold here. So the only problem is that like technically, wait, is this in the same exact spot? You guys ask me sometimes for pattern matching streams and this is kind of, kind of that. So you have to allow for the seam allowance, right? So if I put this pocket here, all right, and we'll just cut this out right now. Okay. Uh, this one here, so this is my new one. Wait, let's uh, make sure this is, why does this look so not straight? Right? Why is it, it just looks, can't tell if it's like a little optical illusion or what. All right, so here's, my new one, right? So this one goes, oof. Is it right there? Right? Right there, ooh. Okay, so I'm barely gonna get that on there. Now this one would go, would overlap it by about an inch, that piece, so that when they're sewn together, they're on the seam line, they will match. More important for bigger pattern pieces it would be more obvious on a, a bigger pattern piece that you're pattern matching rather than this all over print. And then you probably would want to, I don't think I need notches though. So that's, that's how I'm gonna do that. <laughs> Two cans, Sam. Oh my God, that's hilarious. That's pretty funny. All right, so here's my, my little pocket here. Extra fabric, put that there. Extra fabric. All right, we have the jammy tops. Okay, and then I need a little bit more of the binding. I'm gonna put a hole. I will find my pattern hooks one of these days, or I just might just order them now. I think I'm giving up. This 
So if anyone's interested in cutting bias or sewing bias or sewing binding, um, I have a couple of short videos and they're um, like the sewing binding I got, I've gotten pretty good at. This piece is so weird to, sew, to cut now. I just don't have much fabric left. These are pockets, obviously. I don't need much. I'm just looking for the biggest piece I can get the bias out of. Might be this. Might be right here. But I do have a couple of quick how-to videos. One of them shows you like lots of ways to, you can use bias binding. And another one, and how to sew it, because I've come up with some really like tried and true tricks. So you don't have to stress about it so much. And then um, the cutting one is just how to cut it up. So yeah, I don't have I don't have a problem finding them, Beverly, as far as to buy, because I have some vendors that I go to for like pattern drafting supplies. But I know I had about a thousand of them because I recycled a ton of patterns from over the years, and then I they're in a box. And I moved them here, and I'm just wondering, like, there's no way I would have thrown them away. They're, it's heavy. I, w I wouldn't mind new ones because mine are so old that they started, like, some of them are oxidizing. And some of the nylon, that nylon cord that, that you put them on is so, like, it just wears off eventually. Wears out and just falls off. <clears throat> so I just hate to buy them because you can only buy them in, like, these massive amounts, you know? <laughs> so... All right, so I'm, uh, I was just actually gonna take a gander at this here. Make sure. All right, so I'm just gonna couple, cut a couple pieces. I really don't need much. I just need a little bit. So um, hopefully this will give me what I need. And let's see, I cut it one and three eighths. It'll, I'll just piece it to either end. Oof, it's just so small. Doesn't have to be on the 90 degree angle, but still. I don't have any more of this fabric. I made a dress out of this. All right, that'll have to do. It's gonna go a long way, but I really don't wanna um, stretch it as I'm applying it like I usually do, because then, um, it will pull it in, you know? I'll tuck it in there, I wanna lose it. <laughs> Just go through the boxes. I have, like I unpacked. I didn't unpack, um, like I did definitely have still some unsewn chicken boots things and I just got to that point where I was like, ooh, I can't, I can't throw this away. I can't donate these cut pieces. It's just too much. So I was like, just, just box it up. It's only two products. And then like I, bought, I put like a bunch of products in one box because there were just literally like a few. You might want these later. <clears throat> so basically I boxed up a business. Like I boxed up everything for take going to a show. You know, like all my booth panels, all my peg hooks, things like that. I keep going through all the peg hook boxes because they sound exactly like the pattern hooks, you know. But they're not there. I've looked through every box. I have, I'm really organized in there. Like everything is labeled so that I don't have to pull apart any boxes to find out. And I tried to keep only that stuff together so I would never have to go through it. There's only a couple of boxes where I was like, eh, it's kinda, you know, I'm gonna mix some things up, but I knew I'd unpack them. All right, so we have our Elm t-shirt. So Hearts Fabric gave us these items to sew and the fabric to sew them with. And then it's the um, Poppy and Jazz. Elm t-shirt. This is for newborn to six years old. We're gonna do a clean finish. Um, well, not I, I shouldn't say clean finish. We're not doing a snap shoulder. I know, right, Beverly? I think you're right. And then I'm doing the willow pen, pinafore and we're doing the willow uh, in size 24 months and then the shirt in um, nine months, so. Yeah, I just didn't want to do it, order them because it's like I have to order like a gross, <laughs> and and then I um, and they're such I don't know about you, but like one of my rare like rare things that just drives me crazy, it'll trigger me is coat hangers, coat hangers in the closet if they grab each other. 
Oh, I did, Megan. I checked. I pulled apart all that stuff. So I was like, it's got to be here. You know, I promise you guys, I don't lose things. I lost two things on my in my move here. One of them was really important and worth about $2,500 and all it was was a list. And I literally remember throwing it away by accident thinking it was something else. Like I know that's what I did with it. And the other was these pattern hooks. That's it, that's all I've lost. So the pattern hooks may have accidentally gotten tossed. Maybe they got put, maybe I donated them accidentally, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know what happened to them. <laughs> I just need to let it go. You know, it's just hard for me to let things go when because I don't lose things. <laughs> okay, let's do the pillow pinafore first. I have this pattern on top, but I have the fabric for the pinafore on top. So here we have the um, willow pinafore. It's Poppy and Jazz patterns, and the um, other the main company that did it is um, Sew so Over It. And so we have these cute buttons. Wait, why are there? I think this has a back button closure and then the overall strap type buttons. Where's the, where's the flat sketch? Is there no flat sketch? What the heck? I guess not. Maybe in the back, let's see. So it's looking a little bit like that. <laughs> I know, it's so frustrating. And I know, I feel like well, as soon as I order them, I will find them, you know? I just need to let it go. All right, so I have this uh, really great iridescent um, cotton. Let me tell you about the fabrics that they sent us. But look at this meerkat. Isn't it so cute? It's a linen cotton canvas. Um, so by a, by Koka, it's one of the Japanese fabrics. So if you want any, um, we can order anything on Hearts with our discount, which is so so ten. You get ten percent off. Um, and these fabrics here, for the Meerkat, it's a Meerkat canvas in teal, and the item number is ninety nine thousand nine nine zero zero zero. It's eighty percent cotton, twenty percent linen. And then the lining, um, oh, they call this peppered cotton. So, and it's called begonia leaf is the color and it's 98470. So these are really interesting because they have the warp and the weft are two different colors. And so it gives this iridescent look. That's how they get like do peonies and the taffetas to have that iridescent look is because they'll do a warp and a weft, two different colors. Um, and if you look at it, it does have that kind of Texture. It's a really great texture actually and these come in a lot of different colors are really cool and I'm not sure what this is for for this. I think they just sent it just to use if we need it Maybe um, as the lining or the binding. I looked over this pattern yesterday A little bit the thing about kids clothes like I keep saying is they're such great opportunities to test things like even if you don't have a kid in your life to give them to there's still a cheaper way to do some sewing techniques and a lot of sewing techniques on a smaller garment that takes less fabric and less time so it's cheaper and then you can also you know use them as like mini a mini library of things to refer back to on what you did or what you didn't want to do next time you know so they are really handy that way all right, so this one's cut one on the fold. I'm just gonna lay this out. This one's not. We have a lot of pattern pieces here though, so let's look them over. Let's see here. So it's our skirt. It does have a skirt seam, which is funny. In my mind, I kept picturing it as a solid thing. I know, I love this fabric print and color too. It's so funny, I saw them post this fabric on Instagram a few weeks ago and I was like, oh my gosh, meerkats. I had no idea that it was in the box they had sent me. <laughs> All right, these are the straps. Looks like I need four of those. Front bodice, I'm gonna be cutting it close on this fabric. This one is cut two on the fold or one on the self and one on lining. Yeah, we might have to do that. I think it's a, um, 
I think what I want to do actually is refold this. So let's put this guy right there. My hair feels kind of big today. All right, here we go. This way I use the fabric in the best possible way by not cutting a big hole right in the middle, right? Now I left this nice big piece over there. All right, so we have that. Um, and that's pretty much a guarantee I'm gonna have to cut it like that, but I'm not gonna cut it quite yet because we're gonna check it first. Let's get this. I'm a little off the camera there, but I'm just gonna check these other pieces here. Now I might be able to get my skirt to right there. And then all the rest of my pieces can hopefully go over here. We could do the pocket in the peppered cotton. Let's see what's this here. The button placket. Oh man, these button plackets, man, they're just killing me. <laughs> I don't like button plackets. All right, so I'm gonna probably do that in the lining. Here we have, this one was two on the fold or one. So we'll do one and then we'll line it. And we need two of this and line it. And then we need our straps. We need four of our straps here. So we're cutting it really close, but we could line the straps. Let's do that. We'll cut two and then we'll line the straps. What do you think about the pocket though? No, uh, Karen, you can totally do it. In fact, I typically will because it's less busy and I can see what I'm doing better. Um, I feel like for, for the camera, sometimes I will because the fabric might be competing for the camera and the camera doesn't like it, like some of the stripes and things. Uh, but yeah, I think it's smart to do it on the back. If, you're, if you need to like pay attention to like any motifs or if you're, um, you know, like cutting something parallel to a line that's printed on the fabric, you know, then I would do it on the other, the right side of the fabric. But no, I think you can do however you want. It doesn't change anything. As long as you don't forget, like, see like this one, I'm going to cut two of it. And I just did this when I was telling you guys that, right? I went like this, but that's not what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to do this and I'm going to flip it, right? You have to remember to do that when you're doing a single layer and it's a cut two. So that's the only thing you need to remember. So, all right, so let's cut this little gal out right here and get it out of my way because I have to do this. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna maximize every bit. So we're doing the 18 to 24 month. I think there's only one view with this little willow pinafore. that out of the way. Uh, I'm going to notch the center um, at the uh, fold right here. And then there's a little notch right here. This is the front skirt. Yeah, I use both fabrics. I think so too, Megan. I'm going to have to. So we're going to leave this and um, mark our pocket, right? We'll just do that right now. This isn't fabric, this is the Swedish tracing paper, which is actually, I'm really liking it. Um, but I can't pull my pins through like you guys see me usually do. So I'm gonna have to do it this way. Since the pocket's sewn to the outside of the garment, you definitely, in this case, Karen, you would want your, you know, your uh, markings on the right side. I don't know how many times I do that with my dart. I'll mark the dart on the right side and then I have to do the whole labor intensive thing of like flipping it over, you know, onto the back. All 
And I always know when I'm marking anything, that's where the pin went into the fabric. I just know that, that's what makes sense to me. And so I just stay consistent. You just do what you need to do. So, all right, so we have our back here. Then we have all this up here. So I think I'm gonna cut this back skirt now and get it out of the way so I know exactly the fabric I need or that I have available to me. Now, is this fabric truly all over, right? It's truly two-way. The little hills are right side up and upside down. So I could do this and I would save the most fabric because now I can have my straight edge of the skirt over here and I just save like all this right here, right? Otherwise, what I would have done was made sure I stayed right side up and then flipped it like this. And I would have had this like little piece I'm losing here. Um, and like that can kind of add up sometimes. You might end up needing, you know, like the corner of a pattern piece to utilize that. So I'm gonna lay this on here and um, I'm gonna cut this off so that I can see my pattern right side up. Just like this. Pretty easy to see if I'm on grain. This is the selvage right here. I'm just looking at this line. I don't really wanna be in the selvage though. The selvage can be kinda of tight, you know? It can distort it. All right, hearts, enough with all the buttons and buttonholes. <laughs> I'm not complaining, I actually don't mind it. <laughs> the only thing I, I feel bad is if I don't end up having time to do the buttons and buttonholes on the camera with you guys, because it's a totally different machine and I need to set it up with the cameras. Alright, I don't know what these two notches are. I don't know why you would need them for your button placket, but we'll put them on just in case. I'll just fold this up like a dish. We'll put our front in there. And now we have, now we know all the fabric we have left here. Right? That way we know, so we don't need this big one. So I'm gonna move it so it stops giving me a heart attack that I need to be able to fit that on there. And so we have all of our little guys here. Our bodice, our strap, and then the placket. So this one is the front and it's two on the fold or one on the fold and one on lining, which I think I'll do. I'm not gonna use interfacing for these pieces and it's mainly because this is a linen cotton canvas and we really don't need interfacing. For that, it's gonna be pretty. The peppered cotton has a really nice weight to it too. So I feel like that'll be substantial. All right, so we have our front. We might need to open this up a little bit for the back. We need two pockets. Look at all that fabric we saved. Here's my plackets if I want, or I can do the um, lining and it'll match the inside of the bodice. So I think we'll do that. And look at all that fabric we just saved. <laughs> it's crazy. So we can do the maybe the straps in these long, narrow pieces. Perfect, yeah. So I'll do these with the peppered cotton. But I kind of, what do you guys think about the pocket? I think the I think a pocket is needs to be in this meerkat. I think it'd be cuter. Alright, it's a 
cute little pieces. So I'm going to mark the waist down here, the center point. Um, I do not need a notch for the armhole. There's no sleeve. Um, I know this is the front because it's on the fold. So that'll be sufficient. And then the back, I need to make this a little bit bigger to accommodate it. Just like this. So what are you guys thinking about the, the gift sewing week? Do you guys have any, um, are you guys, is that, is that what you want? I just want to make sure you guys want that too. Just double checking that they changed their little line there. I know it's cutting it close for some gift sewing. I think that um, the fabric they sent for the bias apron is so cute. All right, so we have this notch here that I think, why is there a notch right there? Ooh, this makes me a little nervous. Um, for the strap. All right, we still need these for our lining that we're gonna cut out. And then the pocket. Hi, Kathleen. Awesome, okay. Yeah, so, so far I'm thinking the, we're gonna do the one yard bias apron. We're gonna do some oven mitts that work. And I think Lisa sent me a link to one. Oh, Beverly, you sent me an email about a YouTuber and I, and I haven't checked them out yet, but thanks for that. An Australian person, right? I know, when you see those numbers, you mentioned their numbers, it's, it's crazy, right? Oh, really, Dominic? I love that, I love that. Um, I love the stocking, that's my favorite part. <laughs> it's my favorite part, and it was like, our rule in the family was, if you woke up before the parents did, you were allowed to only touch all the things Santa left for you. So everything in the, the stocking, and if um, he left anything unopened under the tree, you know, like unwrapped under the tree, not unopened, unwrapped. And so those were the things we were allowed to play with. But I just like, man, Santa was good. Like really good at putting so much in that stocking. And you know, you could just like, all bets were off. You could eat all the candy in there. You just had like a tummy ache by the time my parent, my mom would get up in the morning, you know? But um, yeah, so, so yeah, the stow bag by Greenline Studio, which ironically, I think I actually sent my pattern to someone. <laughs> so I had to get that back. And then um, the other mitts, the apron, and then I'm gonna do the cupcake and pie pin cushion, I think, that week. But I'd like something a little, something that's also not so domestic. We can do the apron in a stream and probably the oven mitt and the stow bag in a stream. I could do the pie and the slice. So that leaves like one day we have. And where's my list? I was reviewing my list before I went live with you. And then I kind of screwed up the stream when I went live today. All right, you guys said zip pouches, boxy bags. Oh, I have that potluck dish carrier. Someone said Debbie Sharp, so I need to check out that person. And I and then Julia said something about a bag at the Quilt Plus booth called Mona Me Bag or Pom Pom Bag. I cannot find that for the life of me. Um, an iced coffee cozy, a micro bowl cozy, microwave bowl cozy. The phone or iPad stand kind of puzzled me because is that like the little beanbag things? Because mine's built onto my iPad. And I didn't know what Aquila was. And then a couple of you have sent me um, some emails for some ideas as well. And I, I like one was this fingertip oven mitt recipe, a pattern that looks really good. I could use that. I feel like all oven mitts are just too big or too small. Like my, they're not deep enough to get my hand like all the way to right here where I want to grab things um, or they're too big and stiff and I can't grab something and I'm afraid 
I'm, it's like the, the mitt goes out to here. And so I, my, it's like this is grabbing the hot thing, not my fingertips, you know? So annoying. Like how hard can it be, right? I'll bet it's harder than we think. Oh yeah, right, Kathleen? We were talking about the um, the uh, port side dop kit. We could do that. The tablet foam pillow. Karen, do you have a pattern in mind? Oh, okay, Aquilo, I get it. <laughs> I heard that term before. Like I've heard people talk about it, but I'm always like, huh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> I literally, <laughs> you guys, my mind automat automatically went to Harry Potter stuff and like quills. <laughs> and I knew that was wrong. And I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want people to be like, not everything leads back to Harry Potter. Because my response would be, well, actually, most things do lead back to Harry Potter. So don't get me started. All right. Look at all this. So we just need our little straps. I bet you thought I was gonna run out of fabric today, didn't you? All right, wait, this is on the angle. All right, so let's do this. Is it better over here? I'm trying to leave the biggest possible piece, you know, just in case we need it later. Could I get this right here? It's kind of a weird shape, but it would straighten that out and leave it for better uses, uses you know? Oh, a triangular bean bag stand. I like that idea, except I feel like a lot of people who have devices, they have a way to prop it already. Maybe a little one for the phone would be smart because those are a little harder to find or, you, or harder than, more that you don't really want to spend money on something like that, you know? You're so, like me, I would, I, I actually, our um, clock radio in the kitchen has a, a phone holder on top of it that you just take, like it just lifts off um, when you're not doing it. Like if you want to play it through your, the radio, your phone. And we use it all over the kitchen. Like we're always propping our phone up. <laughs> I mean, my daughter at least, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I had a friend make a version of it in um, laser cut wood that turned out pretty darn good. So I have one here at the office too. In fact, it's right here. <laughs> this is it. She even copied the little <laughs> pieces that get stuck into the, the, uh, the clock radio. All right. We're just gonna do two of those and then we'll do the others in the lining. Maybe I would interface these. I'm gonna think about this. Maybe I'll just cut extra of the lining fabric instead. You know? A beer coffee mitt, mitt. wait, oh, okay, okay. Right. Oh, so I see. So the, the, the triangular beanbag thing, it's like something that sits on your lap. Well, that, that sounds, uh, I can see that. I can see the merits of this. Okay, okay. If that's what you guys want, we'll do it. You know? I want to do what you guys want. I'm trying to find patterns that you might already have because they've been around, kicking around, you know, for a while or um, are free. Or focus on stash use. Do you think that's supposed to be at an angle right there? I think so. If it's a strap, it's probably a good idea. I'm gonna cut four of these. Uh, I may choose later not to um, do that, like use all, all like two layers for facing. I'm just gonna see. But I'm also, I just got distracted because I just realized these are my straps and look at all the meerkats look upside down. Except for this guy, look at how cute and cheeky he looks. That'll be good, a button can go right here next to him, but let's recut this one so we have a cute mirror cut on the other side. All 
All right. I hate it when I line up my pattern on the fabric so that I can't do this. <laughs> and I have to like piece cut it like this. I dropped my first quilt off at the quilter yesterday, you guys. Can you believe it? I'm joining the club. All right, so we're gonna recut one of those. That's why we saved as much fabric as we could. Yeah, I know. Like not domestic or for guys. Yeah, I would like that. I like that idea too. Oh, hi Pamela. I just realized you weren't Beverly because your names are the same color on my screen. <laughs> um, yeah. My mom and dad both use those. Those rice eating bags. Yeah, I think that's a great. Hi, Rival. Hi, May. Haven't seen you. <laughs> I probably missed your comments. Sorry about that. <laughs> She's on Twitch. Okay, so I'm going to have to cut this on the cross screen. It's the placket. Do I want to go like this? I'm going to do this. I'm going to go like this. Those out of the way. I still need to line my bodice. All right. Let's see if I can straighten this up a little bit. I'm looking at the grain line of the fabric, the weave. That's how I'm telling. There's a gal, I don't know who it is, but she lo is local and she makes those um, rice heating bags and sells them at my chiropractor. Um, and I actually bought one last year after the fire because my parents had lost, they lost everything. And that was one thing they were like, I'm still looking for, There was they missed it. And I was like, oh, I know where to get one of those because they're sold at my chiropractor's office. It was kind of cool. I'd always seen them there. And the woman uses like all kinds. She has fun with fabric. Like she's just like, I'm gonna make whatever, you know? It's awesome. This looks, this looks like it accidentally got cut off, doesn't it? Let's check it. Hi, Chelsea. <laughs> I totally know that struggle. <laughs> the 3% phone battery and I really want to watch a stream. <laughs> oh wait, though this goes all the way to the front, up to the top bodice. All right, so let's see. I bet it's three, three eighths inch seams again. So let's see. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like I lost a little bit. So let's just leave a little extra there. We'll just leave that there and then um, I'll cut it to fit. And I knew that looked suspicious. I'll bet it just got stuck under something else when it got cut, you know? So um, let's pin this one on here because I'll be like, why did I pin this on here? And then we'll know that we need to kind of true that up when we get it onto the pattern. Do I want to, do I want to cut this as the interfacing? You know me, I actually like, you know, I might stitch it down. I think I don't think I need it with the canvas. I really don't. You can always add it later. You know what I mean, jelly beans? All right, let's put this back. And then let's cut our... So I had to watch my How to Sew My Project Bag video yesterday. I don't really enjoy watching videos of myself. So every time I, I have to come to my YouTube page a lot to get grab a link. Like someone will ask a question. I'll be like, hey, here's a link to it or whatever. Or I'm linking it to the project, 
you know, like in, on the website where I have like, I'll have like the Willow Pinafore on there and I'll have all the links to all the videos, right? So I'm constantly doing it and I can't remember how to turn off the autoplay on YouTube. So every time it comes on with that stream starting soon screen, so it doesn't look like it's playing, it just looks like it's not moving at all. And so then all of a sudden, like I'll go to another page and then I'll hear myself talking. I don't really like that. I'll start hearing me talk and I'm like, no. <laughs> and I had to watch my project bag how to sew video because it's getting to that stage now and the way I say our like our is so weird and I can't I can't figure out what it is about the way I say it that I don't really like and a couple of other things it's like when you start seeing your mannerisms it's like why do I do that I wasn't even raised in that part of the country to talk like that you know it's really funny Okay, so I'm gonna cut both of these in lining. One of them is on the fold, this one right here. So we'll put you right there and then we'll cut. I'm trying to use this fabric the best. I think I'll do it right there. It's like when you guys give me a hard time for saying twerking and you hear twerking. I think you guys are just giving me a hard time when I say that though. I think that's Nancy. <laughs> One time this fabric, this woman came into the fabric store I was working in. I was in my, I was 26 years old. I remember. So this was a while ago and she, I didn't know this at the time was studying linguistics. And she asked me and the, another person working there, like where we were from, because she could identify certain things. And one of my issues was the fact that I lived with a gal from Louisiana and she was affecting some of the things I said. And that was really interesting. You know, like it was really interesting what she was picking up on. She goes, you say this, say this word and I, whatever word it was, I can't remember. And I was like, oh, I know why it's, you know, she says, you say it like you, did you ever live in the South? And I was like, no. And I was like, oh, I have roommates. It was really interesting. I find that kind of stuff so interesting. And it's probably because I've studied some languages. That's so cool. And I love seeing someone like who doesn't speak, like say I meet someone from Mexico and they're talking to someone from Mexico or I'm, I've worked in factories where lots of people are from Mexico and South America and their accents and some of their words are really different and there'll be like these big discussions on the different like the same what word they use for like the word car you know it, it's so fascinating I love that kind of stuff and it and it like tickles them too and they tease each other and it's really funny I love it all right so we have our I love a contrast line bodice it'll be cute we just need one more meerkat button facing, right? Not button facing, strap. Yeah, Chelsea. Yep, yeah, I do. <laughs> you know, this is the way I look at it, Chelsea, is um, I had to decide, and it kind of happened as I started because I didn't plan on doing this as my my 100% gig because I had a whole business then with the factory. But I really loved streams so much. All right, where do you think this button? This is where the button goes, right? So it goes behind. Oh, it doesn't even matter. The meerkat's not even matter, but let's like at least put some of these up right side up. Um, I had to decide, and it kind of happened on the fly, like why I was doing it, right? So use that as your guiding principle, right? And so I also had to de decide and get really comfortable with my style isn't for everybody because at early on I did have people say, you don't iron enough, you don't pin enough. They would tell me things like that. And I had to, at first I was like, I don't iron enough, you know? And so I iron started ironing more where I want to, you know? And I had to kind of remember why I was doing what I was doing and what my goals were. 
because you don't do this to make money. So you have to, so do it for what makes you happy and what you want to share and what you want to get out of it and what you're trying to build. Like for me, I want to help people. I have all this experience and I felt a little bit cut off from other sewers and sewists. So especially because my other business was making, was a, you know, manufacturing bags. I'm having trouble seeing the grain line here. Um, for a crafty market, but mostly knitters. And there wasn't a lot of sewing, you know? So sometimes people would be really disdainful of me in the knitting world. Like, well, why should I buy a bag from you? You don't knit. I'm like, I knit. They're like, well, who made your sweater? I made my sweater. <laughs> and so I was already like having to prove myself in that world as a knitter when I knew what I was doing as a sewer. And so it was really weird being cut off from the rest of the world of sewing. Like I had no idea what was going on in the home sewing world. I had no time to sew for me. So that was kind of a weird thing. So I, I loved streams for gaming so much and I found them so helpful and they really got me over some humps, especially since I'm an adult gamer and there wasn't a lot of, you know, help for that. Right? So I decided like, I want to try this with sewing. I don't really see anybody doing this. And, um, what would I offer that's different? That's the first thing you got to decide, right? Like, why would anyone watch me, you know? And I just decided, you know what? I just want to sew with people. I just want to meet other sewists. And if I can help out or learn from them, that's great. That's what I'm looking for. All right, prepare your eyeballs. This is, this might be kind of red. Like me and this shirt, <laughs> me, me, my shirt and this bamboo, they are very different colors but it was a little bit of red. Sorry guys. <laughs> I should have, should have worn something different. So yeah, I, Chelsea, I would just like, sometimes you, like I get, sometimes I get some critical comments in my, on my uploaded videos. I don't think that they would ever dream of doing it in chat because maybe they would worry chat would kind of get on them. And so I just feel that on my own. So I'm sitting there in my jammies at home, looking at people's comments, criticizing something I sewed. And it's just like, whatever, in the moment, I'm doing it live in front of cameras, you're not. <laughs> and you know, we all have those things we're not that proud of with our sewing, right? So it happens. And you know, a lot of times I actually do go back after a stream, I'll look at it and be like, oh, I didn't even notice this and I'll clean it up. I don't mention it to you guys because you don't really care, right? Certain things that I changed, I will tell you because I don't want you guys to think I'm trying to hide something, you know? But just get, Decide what you want to get out of it and, and you're going to be tested, you know, you're going to be tested a little bit. And then also, um, I had to decide like, well, why would anyone want to sew like me? Because my style's a little different because I come from the production world and I, I really, really deeply respect the slow fashion and the slow sewing movement really deeply. So my method is very fast sewing. And um, I'm trying, I try to kind of deliver that in a way that's like, you don't have to be fast. But I feel like if this were to be a video of me cutting and sewing something, and it's like live, right? It's slower paced already, as opposed to an upload video where they can fast forward through parts, they can speed it up, they can speed motion it, they can um, edit it out, and they can really crop it down to an 18 minute video when it really took them two hours to sew that, right? So I have to make it so that I'm not going, like I'm not trying to go lightning fast, but it still has to be at a good clip so people are interested and they're kind of like wanting to follow along, right? <laughs> That's awesome. You know what I, you know, the, my most favorite thing that I hear from you guys is that you're like, like it's usually confidence based. So it'll be anywhere from, I use less pins and I, I like it better. You know, I don't say you should use less pins, right? I don't care what you do, you should do you. You know, like I sometimes pin the heck out of things, but mostly pins right now for me kind of get in the way and it's 
just my sewing style. So, um, and I've been trained to not use them, right? So that just works for me. It, I don't, there's no judgment with it. <laughs> I don't know why. Or, or remember how like a lot of you were like, wow, your seam ripper's right there. I'm like, yeah, of course my seam ripper's right here. My seam ripper and my scissors and my all are the three things that are always right there, right? No, Vicky, I hate it when people assume I know something. They do that a lot in gaming. And they call me a noob if I don't know. And I, I don't really, I feel like, what the heck? You didn't always know this. You know, we don't come with all the knowledge, right? I think my, my only pet peeve when I'm trying to convey my information and teach people is when someone retorts back, well, it's easy for you. And it's kind of a, a confrontational comment. I just feel like, well, it, well, it better be. I wouldn't be standing here after sewing for this long and doing this if it wasn't, right? So let me have that. <laughs> I deserve that, you know? <laughs> right, Chelsea, exactly. Like, I deserve for it to be easy for me. I have paid my dues, and you guys see when it's hard. <laughs> so it's not like I'm trying to, you know, I'm not trying to make it look easy. I'm trying to give you strategies and techniques that will help it go together easier, right? Or like, don't worry about that, worry about this. Because I feel like those are all the things I had to figure out, you know, and they don't, and people I think have trouble remembering that. Like I have a lot of trouble remember being a beginner and you guys remind me of certain things that I'm like, oh yeah, 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 okay, okay. And I try and think back of like what projects taught me that, you know, so. Yeah, totally, Chelsea. I feel like being a person my age, I don't wear makeup. I don't dye my hair. I am, I wear what I wear on camera, what I wear all every day of the week. Like I don't, I just decided that it had to be easy and comfortable and be myself. And the thing is like already my stream is more polished looking than a, some str live streams because usually it's a gamer and his bed's behind him and it's not made right and there's like you know all this taco bell packaging so <laughs> i feel like some ways i lose points for it to be being really polished but my target audience you guys don't probably want to see my unmade bed behind me right so <laughs> it's just one of those things you just gotta figure out what you want and all the time, I'm always like, why am I doing this? Why should I do, no one wants this. Like there's like 10 people who really want this. Why am I doing this? And I'm like, I enjoy this. I really like sharing it. So you just gotta remind yourself and stand, like write down today, Chelsea, what it is that you, why you wanna do it. Just write it down and set it aside and don't forget it. And then look back three months from now. So, hi Eliza. Yeah, Chelsea, I feel like, well, I mean, and that's the thing is like that I worry about that because I know sometimes some of my methods lead me to a successful path a little easier because I have the experience, right? I know what to anticipate. And I feel like then in a way that you're not seeing enough mistakes, you know, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I hate saying it that way because it sounds like I'm saying everything I do is really easy, but it's just more that I feel like you deserve to see the process. And so sometimes, you know, that's why sometimes I want to do something kind of advanced and hard because I, I like to struggle. So, you know, <laughs> I, really, it, I really do. I mean, in fact, like on Saturdays, I'm like, oh, okay, now I have a break. I don't have to stream. But by like Monday, I miss you guys, you know, like I miss hanging out with you, you know. You can't even see my pattern. It looks like I'm about to cut nothing, but there's a pattern there. You see it? <laughs> Sorry, it's like not showing up very well. <laughs> Maybe I can lower the camera. Let's see if I can. I don't know if that will even help you guys though. I have the, I have my other camera. It's such a weird, oh, I know what I do. I usually zoom it. That's what I do. Oh boy, I just kind of made that worse, didn't I? Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Ah, they're such tiny little pieces, you know? So. Yeah, I think Chelsea, like coming up with the setup you really like and figuring out all this part too can be pretty daunting. And if you can get past this part, you'll know you really wanna do it. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like 
we all have some things in our life. Oh, I wish I could do that. I wish I could do that. But then we, when we try and put a little effort toward, we're like, I don't really want to do that that bad, <laughs> you know? But like this, like I, this whole like all figuring out cameras and microphones and and all this and the and the software, uh, you guys, I really want to be here because I don't like that part. You know, I don't like not knowing how to do that. It's frustrating. I will, I like, this is the arrogant, this is the most arrogant I feel like I can be in this genre, is this, this, the angle I will be the most arrogant is, I don't want to be a beginner at certain things at this point. You know what I mean? Like certain things, I'm like, I don't want to struggle about this. I don't want to be an, I don't want to be an expert in video stuff. But at the same time, like I love learning and I love being a beginner. It's just that kind of things. I just don't want to. I don't want to, it feels so foreign to me and I feel like I'm always doing it wrong. Like I was in Discord, which I'll bet, I don't know how many people are watching right now, but I'll bet 75% or more of you have never even heard of what Discord is because I needed to find out help on my unified chat, right? That's how they do it because that's the streaming world. And I was so nervous in there because it's like a format I don't know. And it's like live help. But at the same time, like you can actually open a voice or video channel. And I was scared I was going to do that. <laughs> you know, I'm just such a noob, you guys. But you know, like when I'm gaming with friends, I have a 1 million percent reputation for being bad and a noob. And it's thankfully somewhat charming to them. So they keep me around. Like I asked my friend the other day, I'm like, I don't know why you play with me. I'm so terrible. And he was like, well, you know, you know, you're, you're nice to be around. I was like, okay, good. <laughs> you know? So, but I, it is kind of weird. Like I wish they knew this side. I wish they knew I was good at something, you know? So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know why we, we got off on a tangent there, but all right. So this fabric, you guys, it is yummy. It feels like butter It is a bamboo knit. Let me tell you about it. Because if you are looking, if you're looking for like that kind of knit that's kind of bouncy and soft and buttery, this is it. It's 93% bamboo and 7%, 93% bamboo rayon, 7% spandex. So, um, and the, they didn't have the item code on here, but it's called Bamboo Knit Red. So this hearts fabric, by the way, they supplied this for us. All right. It cuts <laughs> like so easily. I need like a smaller, this is what I'm talking about. Having these small blades for these little tiny circle. Let's see circles. I mean curves. Let's see if this blades, oh, this blade's sharp enough. Great. I, I feel like I haven't turned, tried to uh, change my blades in a while. So I wasn't sure. It's funny how you can, they all happen at once and you don't, you have to change all the blades so that they're all in sync. I like it when they're kind of out of sync from one another. So you have at least always one sharp one and one on its way out, you know, it's pretty thin, Eliza. It's very thin here. Let me like, but you see what I mean? Like it's kind of, it's that bouncy kind of knit. I don't know if that really, like the fabric I'm wearing is a merino wool jersey and it's got great stretch. It's thinner than this. Let's see, Eliza, can I show you like the, I don't know if seeing the like edge would help you. My nails are trashed right now and I feel like I'm going to blame it on Halloween candy because <laughs> that seems kind of logical. Um, I'm going to notch my neck right here little nervous on this knit to do that. Um, I'm going to put one notch there and then that way I'll know this is the front. I'd rather not notch this if I don't have to a whole lot, but I'll just keep this with it. This is a really nice knit. I like it a lot. There's a lot of fabric here. It's very wide. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and I, you know, like getting back to thinking about that, 
You started no, I, I am happy to talk about that, you know. I'm not I'm pretty open about everything, Chelsea. Um, no one really comes in here asking about that kind of detail, so I don't think we've ever really talked about it. So I'm sure everyone appreciated hearing something new from me for once. <laughs> um thicker than a double brushed poly. No. I don't think, but you know, Eliza, the knit that um <laughs> The knit that I was just cutting out, Eliza, by Spoonflower is a really nice knit. Thick, you know, because I feel like the thicker knits kind of hide your bumps better, you know? This one is nice because it's so loose and it's got these details that it kind of glides over everything too. <laughs> so Eliza, that, um, I think it's the organ organic cotton knit that I got from Spoonflower. That's great stuff, you know? This is pretty thick, but it doesn't have that kind of drape, you know? But it's it's a lot thicker. It's not it's not tissue thin. It's just so drapey that it feels like it, so. <laughs> Oof, big curves for this big or tiny curves for this big blade. Yeah, I mean, I think about the stream a lot because this is what I would, I would like to do this full time. Like I would like to stream more often, but you know, I'm not a gamer. I don't just sit, turn on my computer and start playing a game, right? I have to like prep the fabric, buy the fat, oh shoot, buy the fabric. Um, oh my gosh. Um, good thing knits forgiving. Sorry hearts. I just trimmed off a little there. You know, there's a little more work and plus the expense. If I were to have to sew, even if I added a fourth stream for the week, if I did four streams a week, just the expense of like cutting and sewing um, the fabric, you know, and the project. It would be nice to have a few more of the sponsored streams for that reason alone. But, you know, I, I would have to have not nothing else going on. And right now I'm kind of, you know, you guys hear about it all the time. I'm trying to finalize those chicken boots patterns for sale. So, and then once those are kind of out in the world, I'm, you know, I'm going to explore other things. But those are what hopefully are going to pay for my stream. It is Beverly uh, when they're next to each other, but no. <laughs> the back is higher. And did you see, I didn't even say anything, sorry. I was so wrapped up in myself. So there is a center back notch right here, but I actually just um, didn't even mention this. I actually did a quarter, I did two notches, one on either side. So I knew this was the back. Thank you for asking me that so I could point that out. Cause look at that, there's not even a double notch on the back. So I'm not even gonna notch the sleeve. I don't know why there would be a, maybe the sleeve has, yeah, so the sleeve just has notch, single notches for front and back. So it must be symmetrical. And that way you can use either, which is, that's helpful, you know, but it, yeah, it is symmetrical. So it would be easier if to tell if you, you did the snap shoulder because um, snaps are usually always on this shoulder right here. And you would know that as a mom, all your other little shirts would be like that, you know, that you're putting on your baby. We talked about putting the snaps on. They didn't send any, and I don't think I have any. Otherwise I would probably do that just so there was that tutorial out there. Um, well, look how tiny this sleeve is. I just folded, I just folded way too much fabric. It's so whittle. It's so whittle. The funny thing about babies is that their head over the course of our life, over the course of your life, your head grows probably the least. And the, um, a baby doesn't have a neck. <laughs> so they have this like wobbly big thing sitting on their shoulders. But the proportion of their head to their body, it looks normal to us because we're used to it. But if you looked, if you actually were to put the size head on a baby, that would be in proportion to their body as we are, it would look tiny. The fabric front and back it is easy to see um, the right and wrong side, if that's what you mean. Yes. You can't see it on camera, but it's very obvious to me. <laughs> Look at this little thing. 
So, you know, you need the snap shoulder often because um, you can't get the, you can't get a t-shirt with the opening over the head. Wait, I need to phrase this better. So say the shirt's on the baby, right? If you can get the shirt over the baby's head without snaps in the shoulder, the opening needs to be so big that the, the neckline sits way out here. We've all seen those babies wearing those shirts and you're like, why aren't they freezing? Why is their neck way out here? And it's because they have gigantic heads. They're basically potatoes, right? So they need the, if you want the neck to be higher up and closer to the um, neck itself and be a little bit more coverage, you need to have snaps or an opening in the shoulder. I don't recommend Velcro because it's gonna grab everything in the laundry and it can scratch your baby. Um, but you, you might be able to find something else. So, yeah. I know a lot about kids clothes because it's where I started at in the garment industry. You'll definitely see people start kids lines and be like, I wanna do this and I never see this. And then they learn really quickly why they never see that because it doesn't actually work on a baby or people don't, don't wanna put it on them. It's so hard to dress a baby sometimes. Sometimes they hate it. Yes, definitely, yes, low cut baby tops. Yeah, exactly. I call babies potatoes. I don't mean it as a, as a negative. It's just that they are, they're at the potato phase, you know? We all love potatoes, don't we? <laughs> I'm only gonna notch the center notch. So there's a lot of notches on this little sleeve. This is such a short distance. I don't need notches to guide me. The halfway point will be really nice. Um, I don't really need it for the hem. I can see the hem shape. So I'm just leaving all those little notches off, but you can put them on if you need them. All right, so all I have left now is the neck band. It's not on the fold. So I'll just use this little sliver I have left because usually your neck band is cross cut, which means that the length grain is like this. It goes like this. So it's the cross grain runs the length of the neck band. So that's how you have the most stretch. So, ah, <laughs> your, your future potato. <laughs> how old's your current potato? <laughs> Not a potato anymore, right? <laughs> My potato just turned 17 on Monday. <laughs> She's definitely not a potato. She's this gorgeous long-legged thing. Five, oh, five is fun. Five, man. So has, has, have they lost their first tooth? Because that's some big stuff. You know, I haven't told the chat, Chelsea, um, that I'm, I went to high school with Chelsea's dad, you guys. We were just at our 30 year high school reunion. And then the other night he said, oh my gosh, I was talking to Chelsea and she watches your streams. So, um, that's so funny. Wasn't that funny, you guys? He's scared to lose teeth. Oh. <laughs> My daughter was so excited to lose her first one, and then she missed it. Like she was running across someone's backyard, and then it was just gone. And she was so devastated, so we drew a picture of it for the tooth fairy, you know? All right, that's everything. That Elm t-shirt, you guys. I know, right, Vicki? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Chelsea was already watching the stream, which is crazy. I don't think that's happened to me yet. <laughs> She's making the Audrey jean jacket. <laughs> this shirt's gonna be so fast to sew and I'm gonna try to do a little bit on my serger, but I'm gonna do the hems not on my serger, not with the cover stitch. Cover stitching these tiny little openings can be tricky, but it is nice um, if you have that capability. But I'm going to just stitch it down and stretch it as I go, so. All right, so. We have a lot of things we're sewing. We're gonna do the Willow Pinafore, the Elm T-shirt, and then um, I already tucked that, and then the pajama top. And remember, we drafted this, so 
Yeah. Yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, oh, he called me Chicken Boots. Exactly. It was my old business. Yeah. That's so crazy. There's so many YouTubers out there. I know, exactly. He sent me a screenshot. I was like, that's crazy. I loved it. Your dad's a really nice guy. He and I were the only ones every night just like not going to the bar. <laughs> we were just chilling in the lobby. He would, you know, I would go get ice cream and we would just hang out and chat, wait for everybody, all the partiers. We're just not the partier types. I don't have anything, I don't have any wrong, anything wrong with people doing it. It's just not my thing. I don't really like being in really loud spaces. Okay, Eliza, we're working on that. So right now we have a um, boxy toiletries bag. So I'm thinking the, the DOP kit by the port, the port side, um, what the heck? Port side travel set by Grainline Studio. There's a DOP kit. I'm gonna look for something else too. Just as an, uh, just cause that one, that one's really awesome. So if you already, guys already have it, it's a really great pattern. I just feel like there could be a simpler one out there that you don't have to hand sew. <laughs> if you guys were there for that stream, you'll know. I'm such a big baby about that. And hand sewing is actually quite enjoyable. So I don't know why I was such a baby about it. Um, we're gonna do like oven mitts that work, small ones, but big enough that you, know, you don't burn yourself. We're gonna do the one yard bias cut apron by Decades of Style, and that one's sponsored by Hearts. I'm gonna do the cupcake and pie pin cushions for a day, probably on the Saturday, so that folks can join in and, and that have maybe aren't even part of the stream usually and watch that and I'll kind of announce that. Um, what else, you guys? No, 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 totally fine, Eliza. Um, what else, you guys? They're talking about an iPad or iPhone um, like beanbag stand type thing, so I'm gonna look for a pattern for that. And then I was thinking the stow bag. It's a lot of things. I feel like this is gonna be one of those times, you guys, where I sew all of them and you guys make one of them. <laughs> so, kind of like me made May, where I was making a dress a week. Didn't I make like five dresses that month? You guys made like one. No, I'm just teasing you guys. I just wanted everyone to have the dress dresses they wanted. Okay, so I'm thinking the, um, some sort of like bathroom toiletries bag. So that's not like kitchen related. The oven mitt and the, the apron. The stow bag by Greenlight Studio. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, Eliza. De definitely, Eliza. I think I'll probably try and do this in a newsletter as well. Oh, great, Karen. And they come with like the, I don't really want the tutorial though. There's great patterns that we can get because um, I wanna make sure I have the pattern I can share with people so they can follow along. Um, let's see, the stow bag and the pin cushions. I think that we've got it, you guys. So let's, let me write this down. Cause you know me, as soon as I leave the stream, I'm like, what were we talking about? <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at all these things I need to do. All right, so we have the, the toiletries bag and I'm thinking the um, port side maybe. Um, I can't write like this, okay. And then the one yard apron and oven mitts. I'm gonna do the pin cushions. The port side could be with something else. And then you guys are talking about the um, stand. Okay, Karen. iPad and phone stand. I wanna do things people want, but I feel like it's that tricky thing. Like I'm starting to see people post, um, this is a quick gift idea. But unless it's something you actually wanted or needed, it's not a big deal, right? Like you're like, okay, that's great, but I don't really need that. Like a pillowcase or it's like, there's a billion pillowcase things out there. I think a pillowcase is a nice idea, but most people like them to match their bed sets. And 
like quilting cotton isn't that soft you know it's i don't really like them as a pillowcase i like like cotton sheeting or poplin is soft enough you can get that at spoon flower but then you're talking about like ink the ink is a little different on those so it's kind of tricky i want to make things people really want okay cool eliza that's great all right so that's good to know yeah and i'm trying to make all things you guys are interested in that's four days right there. And I was thinking about um, five days that week. It's kind of like our um, five days of Christmas, <laughs> right? Oh, I was thinking the stow bag. So let, we'll refine this. Someone, I think it was Lisa sent me a really great oven mitt, like a fingertip oven mitt pattern. Um, and then, um, is the sand something you need a pattern for? Is something you just cut a shape to so many? Maybe Louise, I'm not sure. I don't think the stow bag is a free pattern, Eliza. I know, it would be nice to have, um, yeah, the apron. I have the apron, didn't I? Yeah, I have that right here. Well, I can, I'm gonna do a couple in a stream. So we're pretty good there. A lot of these will take smaller money. I mean, you know, like, Coasters are always great, but I feel like we all have tons of coasters, you know, they're just fun to sew. That's the diff. That's the thing. Separating out what you want to make because you enjoy making it from what people actually want to own. Yeah, it's full price pattern. Exactly. I got mine. It was included in my needle sharp box, but I've never made it. Hmm. Let me think about let me think about that one. Because same with the DOP. The DOP is um, when you have to buy. I have I have a boxy bag pattern. I have Dominic, um, or is it Dominica? Sorry, Dominique. I'm trying to see your whole name. Um, we made the um, making backpack by Noodlehead. Have you heard of Noodlehead? She has some really great bag patterns. Oh, it's Megan. Okay. I'll try to remember that. <laughs> sometimes, uh, sometimes people will log in and or, or join and then they're on their like, um, partner's account and then they're like, wait, that's not me. Yeah. I've made that twice. Yeah. So if you go to my website, which is so, so dot live, um, and then you search the making backpack on there, You'll find all the links to them. I've made it like four times, but I've made it, I think two or three times on stream, you guys. I just made it recently. Yeah, I know, Louise, that, that sounds like a fun thing. Isn't that kind of big though? The handles are kind of big. I wish I had, I was gonna bring it out and I, I don't have it, I, I sent it to someone. I'll get it back though. But let me think about the bag thing, Louise, and maybe find a, another one. I don't. It's like, it's like that kind of that juxt that, that thing, like balance, like free patterns are great, but at the same time, I want to support someone too. Awesome. Great, Megan. Yeah. Check those out. So the most recent one I sewed is the Harry Potter one. And then the purple one was my early streaming days. I think I've gotten a little bit better. Yeah. So, um, I don't, I think it does Louise. I think it does. See, I live I live in the town um, where Chico Bag is. I don't know if you've ever heard of Chico Bag, but it's like a like a stuffable, stowable bag. I have tons of those, so I've never needed to make the stow bag. The stow bag actually doesn't stow like that one does. So, <laughs> so funny. I know, right, Eliza? That's what I think. Okay. So let me look at that. I'm gonna research bag patterns. We're gonna refine this list by the end of this week. That's our deadline. And then that way we all have uh, next week to get together some stuff that we wanna do. Cause then the following week is when we're gonna be sewing these things. I'm also making the Cascade duffel coat in December. So we might want to decide if we wanna do that earlier in the month than later so that you have more time to work on your blocks. So a scarf neck warmer pattern, that'd be cute. What, what Louise? Is that a lot to sew? <laughs> uh, 
I feel like, you know, like I'm taking next week off. Off. Awesome. Yeah, I think it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> Eliza, are you a teacher? I know my daughter has two weeks after next week. And so she works, she goes to school at a independent school. And so they technically have the whole week off, but they say they're in session and then they cancel classes so that they can still have those days on the calendars because of the way they're independent. They're allowed to do that because they can send work home. They're home based. That's a serious pattern. Oh, should I allow more than a week? Do you think? Oh, you're a college professor. Oh yeah. I bet you're ready to see the backsides of them at this point in the semester. <laughs> I'll look at that, Louise. I may have to make it a two, like, it's going to be definitely two parts because the opium coat took me, I really took my time with that, and I'd like to do the same with the cascade. So maybe we'll make it, um, I, we may have, like, a long break. And, ooh, I don't want to do a long break in between, though. That would be so dicey, you know. I'll figure it out. I'm going to check it out. I haven't looked at it really closely yet. I kind of wait until I'm about to sew it, which probably isn't the best idea. I know that, but yeah, I like to be spontaneous. Okay, so um, I got my homework and, you know, tell me for sure, you guys, if you're like, I do not want to make that as gifts, tell me that, all right? All <laughs> right, Eliza. Oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I bet. I need something on the screen here because it's like so black. <laughs> like, I mean, not black, it's so white. I need some black to break it up. This little guy is spinning around. This is how I, I stabilize these by going like this now. It's really great. I just put three pins on underneath and then it sits there so nice. Yeah, I really loved it. I loved making the opium. That collar issue really, I really wanted to sort through that. I'm really glad I did, you know. All right, well, I'm going to take off. We cut three things. We did three things in two hours. Not bad. Especially I did a lot of chit chat. Um, you'll, you might see me go live again after this. And it's because I'm trying to sort out a certain issue. And I'm going to have someone in help. So you can just ignore me when I do that. I'll try and do it privately, but I don't know if I can. <laughs> so thanks you guys for coming um and thanks for the new follows and people join in let me oh have i missed you guys on twitch okay good Phew. see a couple of people are there but they're not chatting so i'm not missing it good i'm glad um and um we will be sewing the pajama top tomorrow and then the kids clothes on saturday Unless I should do the, do you guys want me to do the kids clothes tomorrow and the pajama top on? I feel like, I think that's what I'm going to do. That's true, Karen. I mean, that would be easy to add. Let me write it down. I think that's come up a few times. Do you, I don't ever use one. So what do you, what do you mean? Like you put it on your to-go cup, right? I'm so glad you, you came too. I'm, yeah, we have a few new people today, so thanks for coming, you guys. I'll write, I'll write that down, Karen. Let's see. Coffee cozy. I mean, more like, you know, a, a ice cream pint holder. It's more my jam. <laughs> um... I think I'll do the kids' clothes. To, oh, I never mind. I'm gonna do the pajama top tomorrow because we did the kids' clothes. I have it on the pa the schedule for Instagram. So I will see you guys tomorrow for the pajama top. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, my husband works at Clean Canteen, so it's not an issue for me. So I forget about those little things. <laughs> but they do the little steel the little steel cups. And those, I don't even like holding them because it's true. They get too cold or too, you know, they don't put hot things, but they get too cold. It's true. All right, guys. Um, hasta mañana, iguanas. I will see you tomorrow for the Caroline pajama top without a collar. <laughs> but but in, and a knit. I guess I did mod it a little bit and a little bit of a trim on it. So we'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much for coming and um, happy sewing. Bye.